Of course, so many people waiting uh, on these kinds of developments since January. And on the phone right now, Bill Garcia, uh, a California licensed private investigator who did some work with the Miliette family and also some notable cases here that we've known about. Uh, Bill, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. A uh, good day. Um, what are your thoughts on the developments today? Well, I think that the agencies involved um, all went through and did their work very diligently and have come up with the appropriate evidence to go ahead, go ahead and make an arrest, possibly more. Um, so I'm happy that uh, things are going forward the way they are. Sad if it turns out to be a bad outcome. And um, like everyone else, wait and see what the particulars are. Yeah, so Bill, when you talk about uh, evidence, maybe more, how could they arrest someone in a case like this on suspicion of murder without having a victim? In, in other words, finding a body, for example. Well, there's, there's levels of evidence that they could arrest them on, but you have to remember that in the criminal system, there's a certain amount of time that you're given so when you make the arrest the clock starts ticking and you have a certain amount of time to prove your evidence so that uh, you can move forward or you know god forbid he was released uh, for lack of evidence so i'm sure they have something very 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 strong and i wouldn't be surprised if they've got um some sort of actual physical evidence because we've often seen this, Bill, um, police don't act and they do not make any arrests or do anything like that unless they have something at least concrete that they can go on. Uh, you know, we've had numerous search parties for months since January, you know, people searching all throughout the county and even other parts of Southern California just looking for her. Right. Um, do you anticipate that we will find her remains? To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a surprise from law enforcement because they have been working so diligently. The best evidence that they could, they could find would be May herself. And um, that's a possibility. We don't know what they're going to be saying at their conference, but they have to have something extremely solid to move forward. We started working with family early on. We volunteer our services like we often do. And we did talk to May's best friend and we learned a lot of information and we did searches both in the area and in the desert areas of Imperial County. And, um, you know, looking to, to actually find her or specific evidence that we know is out there. Um, so it could be used by law enforcement. So it's always been an assist law enforcement effort. Uh, our parameters are somewhat different than law enforcement, but ultimately they have the funds, the manpower, and the technical knowledge to process everything that has to be processed in this type of a case that I am sure went back to at least uh, December of the previous year. Uh, Bill, can you give us and a so Sorry for right. interrupting there. I want a little insight as far as like what you were able to find in your work with them. Where, which directions were were you able to be led? You say, for example, it looked in the desert. Like, how do you how do you know where to look in the desert? Well, particular areas of interest uh, were looked at, and my suspicion is this was part of a domestic violence abuse case. You have to look at these cases culturally because every culture has a little bit of a different aspect on how they conduct life. In this particular culture, as in the Hispanic culture, women in particular are more likely to stay in the relationship because of their children and not leave the relationship um, that you know this abuse has been causing. And so I have a, I have a suspicion that giving on what we know and what was occurring before her disappearance, that this is a very likely scenario. Much like the young lady in Utah, um, I have a feeling that May was the victim of a domestic violence issue. And um, that's kind of where you start. So you go back and you look at places that have, in your mind, been memorialized. December was very important for 
the part of Anza Borrego where we found Guillermo Pino some years ago in the mud cave. That was the primary area to search, and I, I and the small team searched there. Um, the Imperial Sand Dunes was another place that they would frequent and where something occurred in the first part of January. So there was a sequence of events that I can't go into that would have led up to this kind of incident, as it so often does, and here's where we are now. Bill, can you help us understand how somebody like Larry Milliette might be able to uh, get away, at least away from authorities for this long? It's been nine months since Maya disappeared. He had a gun restraining order, as you mentioned. Uh, they've had multiple search warrants at his home. He's been there at his house for nine months. He's the only person of interest. How does, how does that play out where, you know, they might have a strong suspicion, but, but no evidence that this guy nine months later well, has been at his house? I, I'm going to suspect and this is, this is my belief, is that a large part of this event had to do with finances. May did very well at her work and did well financially. There were certain events that occurred prior to her disappearance where there was a ch uh, major change in financial situations um, that May was not very happy with. In fact, I'm going to stop there. I'm not going to go on with that. Um, but there are things. I mean, in this day and age, it may take a little while, uh, te technology-wise, but it's because there's so much technology on there. People watch crime shows these days. Um, you know, C CSI's uh, investigative uh, programs, and, and they learn from these. These are almost like textbooks for some people. Uh, narcissistic people, you know, primarily, and and others who wish to do people harm, and they learn how to avoid things. You leave your cell phone home. You know that even if you take the battery out of your cell phone, it's still going to be noting your location. So you leave the phones home. That to me was a major flag way back in the beginning. Is okay. He didn't want to be tracked because, and I personally, I felt that Larry very much had something to do with. Uh, her disappearance and so the fact that the cell phones left home it's not going to track along with where you go so to me that's a red flag there's a lot of little indicators that show to me throughout the process that you know what this was planned this wasn't spur of the moment they've been together since they were 14 years old uh people get tired in relationships but instead of breaking up and going on with their lives you know some stay in a relationship for the betterment of their children. Others take advantage because they know what they can get away with, as I believe occurred in this case. Um, even though I, I'm not in the area any longer, uh, whenever we have a, a lead or possibility, we sometimes will check in with uh, certain people and then, you know, quietly go about it and do a search. But uh, I think we're going to get a, a real surprise because they didn't make an arrest lightly. There's something major that's going to come forward, and I suspect uh, everything's going to unravel if it hasn't already. We don't know that. And so um, we're all very hopeful that she is found if she hasn't been found already. All right. Uh, Bill Garcia, certainly they have been close uh, to uh, making steps forward. This obviously a major step mm -hmm. forward in this case. Bill Garcia, who worked with the Millete family on trying to find Maya throughout. Thank you so much for the insight. We appreciate uh, a lot of you know, information as we try to understand exactly what may have led to this point here over nine months. We invite everybody at home to stay with us here on Fox 5 for developments in this breaking news story. We're getting new developments all throughout the day here. There is a news conference that is scheduled for 3.30 that we're going to bring you live here on air. You can also follow along on the Fox 5 San Diego mobile app. We're going to take a quick break here. We'll be right back on the Fox 5 News at 1.